You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. All right, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call. I got Brad Hunt here. Today's guest on the podcast is Ryan Lampers, a.k.a. Stealthy Hunter. Mm -hmm. And on this episode, we talk about our recent hunt in Alaska when we were bringing home, um, well, a couple of caribou each and uh, his moose. Four caribou, a moose, Uh, and a bunch of meat. Yeah, 400 to 450 pounds each of meat. And the question is, how do you get your trophies and your meat back when you do a hunt in Alaska? And kind what are, of the care before you actually get it on a plane. Yeah, what are all the ways and what is all the costs? And it's actually surprisingly inexpensive if you know the tricks mm-hmm. and uh, what to do. Uh, and you have a little planning ahead of time because I've spent a couple, two, three grand trying to get just horns back yeah. from, from some remote hunts. Whereas we were able to get this stuff for a few hundred dollars uh, back with us and right. uh so listen to this podcast get all the details if you're this is a hunt you want to do and we apply this strategy to new zealand as well mm-hmm. a lot of it to new zealand and some other like far away hunts yeah and what's nice about alaska you know is it's in the united states so it does help you don't have to go through the whole tariff mm-hmm. things and shifts and stuff like that versus canada and some of the other places but right and it's, uh, it's very doable it is. It's very affordable. So hope you enjoy this episode. Before we get into that, Ryan Lampers does have a giveaway going on right now. You can win mm-hmm. uh, for, uh, a Harvest Right freeze dryer, a Go Hunt Insider Lifetime membership, yeah, and a uh, pass to the Western Hunting Summit this June of your choice. So it, it's a big package. All you got to do to be entered to win is just shop at Stealthy. Um, get some of the supplements, the yep. glassing pad, the rifle cover, whatever Hillary and Ryan have in their shop. Just shop over there. Every 10 bucks you spend gets you an entry, mm-hmm. and they're going to announce that. They're going to pick that winner. Well, they're going to close this giveaway on the 18th. The which 18th is, of December, and it, and it oh, which is Sunday, uh-huh. and then it, they will announce it on Christmas Eve. The winner on Christmas yep. Eve, yeah. So if you want to get entered on that, in on that, just shop over at Stealthy and use the code GRITTY. And then use the code GRITTY over at Peaks, and you could be entered to win a $6,000 hunt package. Yep. Bow, arrow, teepee, yep. backpack, Bloodhead, backpack, crispy got, boots, yep. everything you could want. It's in that package. Um, and uh, if you want to be entered to win, just shop at Peaks. Use the code GRITTY. Every $10 is an entry to win. Mm-hmm. We are picking that winner on December 18th. And today only, this Thursday, today only, uh, for every beanie and hat that you purchase, you're going to get three times the entries. So there you go. The other giveaway right now is the gritty swag. Mm-hmm. Like uh, every hat sweatshirt and shirt. Hat I got today, a hat but... on right now. <laughs> Brad has a gritty sweatshirt on yep. and there's t-shirts. I have lived the night in this thing. Like it's perfect for this temperature. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. It's, it's solid stuff. Go check it out. Just go over to uh, briancall.com. Click on shop. You'll find it. Or just type in grittystore.com. And every $10 you, you spend gets you enter an entry. And we're going to pick that winner on Sunday as well. Yep. So that's coming up here. You got a few more days. I can't thank you guys enough for participating in this giveaway. I don't know how many hats and shirts are really left or or sweatshirts, but they got. Yeah. I think they're getting new hats today or tomorrow. So yeah. if you went over there and you couldn't find anything in stock, they're they're hustling to try to get yes. product in stock. I think they do have water bottles and some other stickers. things, stickers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just. Thanks, everybody, who has already shopped over there. And I'm sorry for everyone who wants to get in on this and <laughs> that we don't have anything. We're going to keep expanding that and hopefully um, find some more cool yeah. designs and You guys ideas. have blown us away on how much. Yeah. We need much more we needed in stock. <laughs> <laughs> it's been cool. So thank you again and uh, enjoy today's show. And stay gritty. All right, folks. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Call, and I'm joined today by my guest, Ryan Lampers, a.k.a. Stealthy Hunter. And uh, we're at Ryan's house right now. Uh, we're on the uh, upper level. He's, he's got one of those fancy two-story places. <laughs> fancy two-story houses. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that fancy. Uh, I do. Now. I do like your open yeah. uh, ceiling, though. That's it's for lots of furs and horns. Antlers galore. Yeah. yeah. At my my first house, which my wife and I had for twenty-one years, was a little box, not a lot of room for this stuff. So. Oh, this is this is a, a dream 
a dream place where you can actually like display all these euros. And it's in the great state of of uh, Montana. Montana instead of um, the sad state of the Washington. Sad state of Washington. <laughs> That's a great way to put <laughs> Sorry, it. Sorry, folks, but oh, we're both from the Northwest over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not. Oh, how it has fallen oh, over there on the it's coast. Not, it's not great. Yeah. But uh, we've got these um, tar and chamois hides right here do. Yeah, from our trip to New Zealand. To display these guys all over the upper balcony here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I was telling you, I can't wait to get that moose hide back. Yeah. That's going to need some space. Um, <laughs> it's not going to fit on this rail, but <clears> we're going to have to find a spot for it. No, the uh, moose hide, for those that don't know... We're going to talk about getting the hide, the horns, and the meat mm-hmm. back from Alaska, including the uh, caribou as well. So mm-hmm. we just dropped the film. It's been out for about a day and um, of your moose mm-hmm. that you just took in Alaska. Yeah, dropped today. We've been sifting through some of the comments. Yeah. Trying to keep up on the comments on the on the YouTube. There's some funny That's, ones in there. There's some good ones in there, man. They're hilarious. Guys put some time and effort <laughs> and thought into some of these comments. There's a few. I mean, I think you should share some if you've got some handy because Well before I do <laughs> Dude, not just, the ones that mock me. I like the ones that mock you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to screen grab a bunch more because there's some good ones mocking you. <laughs> there's a lot that are uh kind of I don't know. What do they call you? Brian Collar now? <laughs> Brian Collar. A, yeah. Phelps like, should pe- bring people, me into people the People noticed team. your um, your calling um, strategies on the moose and how it worked. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> great comments, though. This one I thought was pretty good just because I love the sto- this show Yellowstone. This guy was like, I struggle to figure out my favorite show between Gritty and Yellowstone. Gritty is probably winning. <laughs> That's funny. That's that a powerful word right there. Okay, and let's just clear this up right now because <laughs> the hair was, or the beard, the, the beard. <laughs> so Brian likes to get those uh, real up close shots. So in this latest film, you'll see a lot of my mug very it's, close, a lot of beard, a lot of by, hair. By the way, folks, the 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 truth about the up close shots of our faces, especially Ryan's face, that is not what I want. It's not ideal. But there's two reasons why it happens. The primary reason is the microphone. Yeah. Um, running laughs doesn't give us the sound I'd like. It's always a, a, a risk that the microphone gets bumped or it's in your jacket. And Ryan is horrible about a lav mic. He hates them. Um, and Ryan is one of the most quiet, whispery people you've ever been around. So that means I have to put the shotgun mic. This close that to close. pick up the whispering. It's uncomfortable. Which every puts time. the fr- the cam- <laughs> which puts the camera <laughs> lens six inches from his face. Yes. Uh, so audio is the first. The second reason is, um, the the big reason is there's certain uh, like your spotter and stuff. Mm. We we work with different companies, mm-hmm. and um, and we try not to have that be part of our productions. Mm-hmm. You know, like. Uh, we're pretty much aligned on a lot of things. And then we're also very independent. We don't have yep. uh, sponsorships, not much, but yep. we do actually both. You've been with Vortex for a long time. Yep. Been friends with Mark Borden for a long time. And I've been with Leupold for a really long time. Yep. And um, Tim Lesser and when Riza was there, really good friends there. And we have different partnership. We have different relationships with those guys. Like, yeah, for, for Vortex with me, Boardman, he comes from where I came from back there in Washington, and uh, he's been a good buddy for a very long time, and I love being around the guy. He's just, yeah. he's just a great guy. So, yeah, there's a lot of that. And I, I have a lot of loyalty and, and respect and love for Leopold. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we both have our reasons for why we, we have these as partners, yep. and neither one of us are willing to change that either. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. And so what ends up happening is uh, it's a conflict if I'm if I'm uh, filming. If you're panned out. So you yeah. Just and so right I'm like, I'm nostrils. trying to, you know, um, <laughs> deal with that. And well, so that's just the reality this, of what we do. So close. But that's pretty much, that's that's kind of the, the down and dirty of it. Mm-hmm. So the camera ends up being, so Which, people out there worry about your mole. Yeah. <laughs> but 
Here's some of the things. Like my wife notices my the rat's nest and my hair. Yeah. A lot. This film really highlighted the uh the grody nature of my hair, my mop. How I didn't unclean even, it was. I didn't even notice during the whole edit until I sat down and watched it and your wife she picks it, it apart up. every mm-hmm. time. She is embarrassed. I wonder how many other people notice. A lot of people notice. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> They noticed my beard. They noticed my hair and how grody it is. So let's just clear this up right yeah, now. As yeah. far as the color of my beard, it Ryan is much dyes darker. dyes his beard. If, <laughs> no, he doesn't. Do I ever, do I appear to be the kind of guy that would dye his beard? I know. It, it <laughs> bugs the crap out of you. What's, what's funny is like if I look in the mirror, like look how much white is in this beard. I know. It's white all it, over. He's got white in his beard. It's just like a. But in the video, it looks dark. Yeah. Like you can't even see it, but there's a ton of white in there. So no, I don't dye my beard. It's and been my getting hair more and more white every year. Bleached out from Look, the sun. You're sitting whatever. next to freaking Santa Claus. That's it. And That's so it. it's so <laughs> such a contrast that people think my beard is like black or something. Yeah. But no. It's not. It's there's not. A lot if of white you see in it in person, you'll see it's got gray and white hairs so in I it. So I don't dye my beard. Let's just clear that up. <laughs> And yes, my hair that, that is would, a mess. You'd lose your man card if you dye your beard. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I don't know who would do that. Um, so, yeah. So, there's there's some comments. And there's a lot of hair comments. Uh, but this one I thought was pretty fascinating just because it kind of backed up my side, uh, my argument for keeping my hair Dirty. the way it is. Mm-hmm. This gentleman wrote, um, Ryan, I want, I want you to know that because of all your time – Actually, all your hair locks and the fact that you are extremely famous, that's not true. (laughs) My wife continues to put up with my wild hair. Mm. Please know that if you do cut your hair, my relationship with my wife will likely begin to deteriorate. And intense marriage counseling will follow suit. Please keep the locks and stay strong. Wow. So I read that to my wife as just kind of backing up my my point that... (laughs) There is no, I'm never no going to cut back. this. I'm never going to cut this yeah. hair. It's just the way it is. <clears throat> so. She misses that young, you know. Baby face. Baby face. Lamb cut. Yeah, that ain't ever coming back. <laughs> that ship sailed. <laughs> that ship sailed. You, you, I'm afraid if you shaved off the beard, that young Lampers would not emerge. It would be a different older Lampers underneath there. Yep. I saw this comment. I liked it. This series has been fired up since the beginning. Stellar footage of the moose charging in of the moose charging in to help that poor sounding moose Brian was emulating. The way those cows came running in was like, holy crap, this kid needs help. <laughs> <laughs> Great work. Oh, um Yeah. Yeah, I, we, we sit back <clears throat> and we laugh at a little bit of the the calling in that situation, but there's no denying that it worked. Like those cows came at running. Yeah, yeah. It's immediately upon you starting that call. So, yeah, <clears throat> it had a little wolf-like sound to it in the beginning, but I think you, you kind of cleaned it up at the end and it's, got that nasally yeah, cow sound to it's it. It's one of those things where it's pretty good. you found the sound during mid-call. Mid-call. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, that ain't it. Wait. <laughs> yeah. Adjust the pitch, the tone, whatever. I was never good at singing or musical instruments, so... <clears throat> Yeah, but it just it goes to show you don't have to be, you know. How did you, you Perfect. know what I did? The, the moose grunts, those sounded like a grizzly bear kind of like growl. Mm-hmm. They were off. Yeah, it was Especially way off. Especially when I hear Chris. The first, the first three, four seconds were way <laughs> off. Like I was a little worried, but then it uh, it panned out at the <clears> end. So. so moving on, mm-hmm. a lot of folks wonder how do you get, these horns, the, you know, I shot a couple caribou, you shot a couple caribou, you shot a moose. When you flew home, how much meat, uh, how much weight was that, that you were flying in? It was, gosh, 400 remember. Um, and what? So, <clears throat> yeah, we split up. So we each got two caribou. I wish I remember the the weights at this time, but, and then we took a moose and basically split that moose in half. So I, I want to say we came back with, what was it? Six boxes. Was it six yeah. boxes mm-hmm. a piece? Yeah. Yeah. 
but I want to say the total weight between the boxes. I had fewer boxes, which was a mistake. Mm. <clears throat> they didn't really save, you know, so I ended up with like an 80 pound box mm -hmm. when I could have had like two, two, you know, 40 pound boxes. Right. Right. Um, which would make it easier to <coughs> load. Although when you freeze it, you know, it had its benefits because mm -hmm. when you're trying to find someone's freezer space, that was it the struggle. Take as much. So number one, <clears throat> we get at the end of this trip, you know, we're back to town. We've got all this meat, right? Yep. Um, number one, we're trying to, you know, we need to have somewhere to put it. We scheduled three days at the end of our trip. Now we did that for a couple of reasons. One, we're going to need some time to break down the meat, get it trimmed, get it packaged, get it ready for shipping. But it also gave us a little bit of a buffer in case we weren't able to be picked up on time, weather, whatever, it gave mm -hmm. us a couple of days there. So we did that. Um, we added three <clears throat> days to, you know, the end of our trip basically, which, which we needed every lick of because um, breaking down that many, many animals take some time. I mean, we were trimming and cutting and bagging and wrapping and mm -hmm. freezing and then, you know, working up the antlers and getting those ready for shipping and then, you know, getting everything, you know, just, just set to go. So we spent two and a half days basically in an Airbnb Which, breaking down animals, trimming. Whatever your transportation is coming out of the back country mm -hmm. with your meat, moose, caribou, whatever. Yeah. Whether it's a van, a boat, a plane, yep, could be any which way. Once you once you get into the city, right? We got ourselves an Airbnb, mm -hmm. and we got ourselves a U-Haul. Yep. And uh, the U-Haul seems to be the method of choice. For, a lot of guys do that. Yep. There's a lot of guys. plenty of them. Now we it's saw much guys, cheaper than a rental car service. Yeah, we saw guys just standing in the back of a U-Haul, like cutting up their meat in the back of a U-Haul. Outside hotels and stuff. The U-Haul we happened to get, uh, there was definitely a lot of blood. It had an odor of mm -hmm. blood in the U-Haul. From so, the people who used it prior to us. Mm -hmm, from the prior group. So, yeah, it's a pretty common practice up but there. We got ourselves a U-Haul, which was not very expensive. I want to say 30 bucks a day or something like that. It was mm -hmm. pretty inexpensive. And then, so we got the U-Haul. We put all of our meat into the U-Haul, you know, out of the vehicle we were in, into the U-Haul and all the horns. And then we drove and then we just got on the Airbnb app yep. and we found um, a, a bunch of places in town and then we just booked uh, booked that. So we that was easy. Mm -hmm. We drove into the, the, the Airbnb and now we have effectively i don't know on the bone in the game bags we have a lot of work to do yeah <clears throat> a lot of work to do so um we needed a few things so we went over to the walmart mm -hmm. we got uh fish boxes basically kind of a a waxy box you know fish boxes aren't always going to be readily available some guys use coolers the cheapest coolers they can get mm -hmm. um but we happen to be able to come across some fish boxes. Um, and the airline requires that you have a waterproof mm -hmm. container of some kind. Not not waterproof, but water resistant. Well, it needs to be wrapped so there's no <clears throat> leakage. Um, so we double did it. We got boxes that wouldn't leak, but we also double bagged everything. But even on the airport, contractor bags. the airline, which we flew Alaska, mm -hmm. the regulation said you had to have like a wax box or a cooler. Cooler. Yeah. You couldn't think, have, you couldn't have a regular box is my point. R oh yeah. 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 No. I mean, you're going to have some, you're going to have some leakage. We all know how mm -hmm. um, garbage bags work. They never hold everything <laughs> in. Right. Especially when you're dealing with frozen <clears throat> product, whether it's fish or meat or whatever. So there's going to be some leakage, but um, those wax boxes, they're cheap. Number one, they're pretty compact. I think they're made for oh, 50 pound, I think they're 50 pound boxes, but you can easily get, you know, 70, 80 pounds of mm -hmm. boned out meat in there, which is what we did. Yeah. So we, we basically bought like four or five boxes each. Mm -hmm. It's about what we needed. Well, we bought too many. We bought way too many. We right. bought extras. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, but if you were to do it, you needed one box. Was it one box per caribou? And then no, it's like one and a half. Yeah. And then you needed at least two and a half boxes for the moose that we mm-hmm. split. Yeah. So we split the moose meat. Yeah. If you have a moose, you're going to need four boxes just for the moose. Right. At least. So we got Ziplocs, you know, court. And these are 40 gallon. Bag Ziplocs. No, the boxes, were they 40 gallon boxes? What were they? How were they labeled? 50 pound boxes. They call them 50 pound boxes. Wax boxes. Okay. Fish boxes. I believe that's what it is. Um, it, it was by weight, not by volume. I think that I think it's a fifty pound box, but obviously you can get a lot more mm-hmm. um, than fifty pounds in that box. But whatever, they're kind of the standard box. It's what Alaska. we used to use when we shipped fish out of Alaska when I was guiding. It's yeah. the same box um, with fish. You get about fifty pounds in there. Garbage bags, garbage bags, boxes, crap ton of duct tape, duct tape, lots of duct tape, more than you think. And that, yep. And cardboard. with that, we... We bought uh, a lot of cardboard, too. Yep. We got cardboard for wrapping antlers and mm-hmm. getting all the tips covered and all that. So we did a heck of a job. I think we did probably above and beyond what we needed to do in everything from the meat wrapping to getting our antlers all wrapped up so they weren't, you know, going to reject them at the air, at the airlines. Yeah. Well, so once we, we, we did our shopping run, we get to the Airbnb... And we, we basically brought one quarter in at a time, one ch- one game bag at a time, a piece. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we worked on it. We, 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 we took great pains to make sure that we didn't cause any damage to the Airbnb we were in. Uh, we didn't tell the Airbnb what we were going to be doing in there, um, the whole idea was to do it and have them never know we ever did it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think we nailed and it. So we, we did take care of laying out some cloth so that the table mm-hmm. and the floor was all covered so there was no uh, no damage done to the place. And then we we butchered for mm-hmm. two straight days. Yeah, we got some cheap little, those little kind of plastic cutting board sheets that we used to, to trim and... And cut meat, um, get it into Ziploc bags where you got these smaller bags that we could just slip into the freezer and get. We got a couple of uh, cheaper uh, fillet knives. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then we know, went the, to the, town. The biggest question mark we had was the freezer because it could be a struggle to find somebody with a freezer, mm-hmm. and we did go to multiple places to find us the ability to use someone's freezer. There's a lot of tanneries. There's a lot of um, you know, meat cutting services, you know, that that have freezers, but shops at that time of year, a lot of them were kind of booked up for space. So they weren't really allowing, um, anything else to go into their freezer, but, you know, we just kept looking and looking and we found a, you -hmm. know, a gentleman who gave us access to his freezer, which helped a ton. Yeah. I think, um, it would have been wise for us to, connect with the t- people in the town or make some calls before we ever got there to try to figure out where we could freeze the meat. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. The meat was well taken care of on the trip. We got it out. We let it air out a lot. We, we had plenty of time to, as we made our trip home, we took care of the meat and it was cool enough that it, it stayed yeah, we, in good shape. We had cool temps throughout the trip, um, frozen nights, you know, and then, cool kind of semi breezy days throughout the entirety of it. So, so when we got to the hotel and we started butchering it, we basically started cutting it up into, we cut and wrapped it basically. And we threw it in Ziplocs and then we put it inside of a garbage bag that went inside the, the plastic, the the wax covered boxes. And we just started like breaking down the meat. So we had all this scrap Mm -hmm. bone, you know, um, sinew and, and whatnot, all the scrap that you have when you do a butcher job that went into garbage bags over here in the corner. And we just basically ended up with four boxes of meat a piece, four full boxes. And, um, the meat, I know my meat weighed more than 400 pounds total. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I wish I could remember the exact total. It was a lot. It was definitely a lot. I mean, I think you were like four fifty something like that. Mm-hmm. I thought I think it was yeah four fifty four sixty. And I think I was like four ten or something like that. Mm-hmm. So then what we did was we once we got the boxes all filled up and we had to find a place to freeze them because we were gonna we were in a hurry to get our the meat butchered as quick as possible so we could get at least a 12 hour or 24 hour freeze on it yeah. before we went to the airport. Yeah. We wanted a, we wanted this stuff rock solid, you know, I mean, it's still a quick flight back here, but you never know if there's going to be a delay and overnight and it's or winter. something like that. It's, yeah, it was cool. So it's not like it's the summer. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but meat, you always want to, the goal is to get that meat frozen. So there's no, it's issues. a lot you've work you've gone through at this point from the field to mm. the airport you hate to have it spoil at that point you yep. know um yep. it's a tragic loss yep so now we're you know i guess i guess i think a lot of um people's questions come with like how do you how do you do you ship to me do you get a carrier do you- well we did find some place to freeze it we did and and uh that's just a that's just a process of making calls mm-hmm. and finding someone and I think we paid, it was, it cost us a little bit, hundred, hundred bucks, hundred bucks yep. to freeze it, uh, for 24 hours. And then we, then we picked it up on our way to the airport. So it was just freshly frozen. We used the, uh, you could use the U-Haul to get to the airport. Um, and then once we got there, we, 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 well, you could take your meat through the airline itself, but it has some, there's some issues with that yeah. or you can use air cargo. So there's, there's, you could, you could ship it as baggage or you could send it as baggage. Um, you know, there's obviously a fee with that, but there is a, a cheaper route. Um, cause I think it's a hundred dollars per oversized bag mm-hmm. and yep. an oversized bag is 70 and that adds 50. Up. It's anything between 50 and a hundred pounds. I think with Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, so that'd be um, four hundred dollars. There's an expense there, but at a minimum, there's a better rate if you run it through Air Cargo through Alaska Airlines, um, which is definitely the way to go. Which is what we ended up doing. Now, if you haven't pre-planned this and you're not a known shipper with uh, Air Cargo, you're most likely not going to be able to use that service unless you find. Someone up there, um, I know some of the tax define known shipper, known shipper. So there is a, you have to go in well ahead of time. Um, I just happen to be a known shipper because of my prior business. So we, we used to ship a ton of frozen products all over the country, Mm -hmm. up and down the West coast, herring and sardines and anchovies and stuff like that. So we had our known shipper, we've had our known shipper number for, you know, a long, a very long time. It's basically a, a form you got to fill out ahead of time, um, get qualified for it, pre-check basically, mm-hmm. so that they allow you to utilize it. And once you are a known shipper, um, you get a, a decent rate yeah. per pound versus what you would pay in baggage fees. The known shipper thing, I believe the reason it's controlled is, is you know, it's for crime and mm-hmm. to, to prevent... Uh, you know, it's flying on airlines. It's federally regulated. Mm-hmm. And basically they have to know, they have to know all the stuff about you. I think you have to have a business license. You have to have a few things to get the known shipper number. Mm-hmm. And in the end, the known shipper, we we talked, you can weigh it out. Like the cost of getting, getting a known shipper ID, if you don't have one. I want to say it's a couple hundred bucks for basically the fee, like annually or something like that for a known shipper. But the process and getting it can take some time, so most likely you're not going to get it. And on as the we spot. something you want as to do we dis- time. and as we discovered, it's actually probably cheaper just to check the meat as luggage. Mm. In that case, mm-hmm. so if you don't have a connection to a known shipper individual or number that you can leverage that you've cleared ahead of time, then It's actually, you know, when we spoke to the locals down there, they recommended we just check it as luggage. Mm -hmm. And the cost, 
would actually probably be better. Uh, but then you got to go to the airport, you know, inside the, the luggage area and you got to wheel those boxes in. Then you got to check them on the airline right there. Where with the air cargo, you can drive right up to the docks where the semi trucks will load and unload product. And you can just get those boxes of meat dropped off right there. And it's cheaper if you do have a known shipping number as well. So it's, it's going to save you some money. Now, the difference in price for the meat as luggage versus known shipping wasn't that much. Yeah, it, was it wasn't still, as much as... I think it was still like $30, $40 a box, something like that. So it was it was half not significant, but it was definitely there's definitely some savings there. Now, the benefit of Because it's, it's Air about cargo, 100 bucks per, per box. baggage. Right. If you flew at home. And I want to say it was costing us like, what was it, 67, 68 bucks or so. For, uh, through Air Cargo. Air Cargo. Yeah. yeah. So I think it it's a $40 per box, maybe $50 per box increase in price. Mm-hmm. If you have four boxes, that's 200 bucks. Here's the kicker. And here's why Air Cargo is the way to go. Yeah. And baggage isn't. Antlers. Moose antlers. Especially. Moose antlers. So... What was it? 115 linear inches max mm-hmm. for to ship antlers as baggage. Now this is something new. This is prior to this year, I believe it was much higher than that. So guys would be able to ship a legal non-resident legal bull, but you get a bull that's 55, 60, 65, 70 inches. Um, they're not going to take it as baggage anymore. So. Nope. Even Air Cargo was very strict, and we had to kind of sweet talk them into it. Like they have different people working, so they don't quite understand what's possible. And mm-hmm. so Air Cargo, though, in the end, um, with their guidelines, they would be able to take the antlers and ship them for us. The only other alternative, it, we couldn't do it as baggage, would be to hire a courier that comes down to the states. And hauls that down, and who knows when we'll get it. It might be in a week. It might be in a month. Only if if you did DIY, but you could Mm -hmm. run it to the local taxidermist, have them butcher, clean, do the skull, and then they have a known shipper number. A lot of the taxidermists have a known shipper number. And they will then they ship all those horns and antlers to the fee to the United. And it's a lot more money. To hire the taxidermist, not only to do the work, but then to also package it and ship it, you end up spending way more than we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we we kind of nailed it on all things, having that shipper number. Um, we didn't have to have a courier, you know, give it all to the taxidermist. So the shipper number is out. huge. Like mm-hmm. if you can get that in... um, There is actually not a big problem shipping the antlers but if you get the wrong person on the phone it's a problem exactly because what they do is they take the measurements of the antlers and they say how tall is it and you measure up and down and they say how wide is it and then you tell them well it's 70 inches wide and it's five (laughs) feet tall and they're like we can't fit that through the door yeah they're they're thinking about it as a as a a box a box like a crate and you have to explain to them, no, these are antlers. You can get them in the door, you know. So you can a lot stick of people under paddle in and yeah. twist it. A lot of them understand that, but there's new people all the time, and some of them you that they don't understand that, so they have to ask and get to that person who can explain it to them. Like you would think, with how much they ship, that you know. But what happens is usually people just drop their their antlers off at a taxidermist in the local area and then that taxidermist uh does the work Mm -hmm. and then that taxidermist ships it and um some of those taxidermists even will leverage like a a cargo courier to -hmm. just haul all their their stuff down in one big shipment to the to the to the lower 48 but yeah, and I've heard varying prices for guys that find some courier that'll haul all the meat and antlers for them down. Um, but honestly, know, having a known expensive. shipper number and then just dropping it off at Air Cargo was simple. Yeah. It was easy. With the, with the minor, like, they 
there's certain airplanes that have a certain door size and mm-hmm. cargo area. And they asked us, you know, where do you live? And of course I'm, I'm out of Utah, out of Logan area. So they said Salt Lake city international airport is mine. And then you had the Bozeman mm-hmm. airport mm-hmm. and they're like Salt Lake city. Easy. No problem. Big planes are flying from, from where we're at to there. But they said to you at first, you're not going to be able to do it because the plane isn't big enough to accommodate right. your moose antlers because the plane is too small. But mm-hmm. that turned out to be false. Not the case. Yeah. Just got to talk to the right person. You know, keep digging, keep asking more questions, kind of explain to them antlers versus crates. Um, and what was interesting is uh, I think their ETA, like when they gave us an ETA, when you drop off, you basically get all your boxes out of the U-Haul. You put it on a pallet mm-hmm. and it's going as, as cargo. Um, they give you an ETA date. Like you're probably going to see this in two days. You know, you'll get it on Thursday yeah. if you're flying out Tuesday or whatever. Um, mine actually showed up. The meat showed up the day of me arriving. It, we, it was the same plane. Mm. So I flew into Bozeman. And your meat was My there. My meat was there. Same plane. It came as basically baggage, but through air cargo. Mine came the next day. And my antlers came two days later. My antlers came like five days later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, the, but they had a freezer mm-hmm. in the various often, locations. Often airports, you know, Alaska is good about a lot of airports. They, they do have a freezer on the other end. So They said Salt Lake didn't have one at its mm. rival destination, but they do. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the, so they didn't, again, you're talking to people in Alaska and they're like, you're going to need to pick up your stuff pretty quick when you, when it lands, because they don't have a freezer in Salt Lake city. And then the people in Salt Lake city goes, of course we have a freezer. We have mm-hmm. fish and meat and all kinds of stuff over here. Yeah. So all my stuff, um, even though it sat there for a couple of days, it was all frozen solid. Yeah. And obviously this is just common sense, but make sure they slap freezer stickers all over those boxes mm-hmm. when you're at air cargo. They know it's meant to be crammed into that freezer. You want to double check. Like they'll make a note on the uh, in the paperwork, but also slap those uh, freezer stickers on the box so they know to put it in there. Another thing to note with the freezer is, or with the uh, antlers, is there are rules for how you have to package them. Mm-hmm. All tips got to be covered um, now. We cover them with cardboard. Some folks, often they go an easy route and they will cut up a piece of hose and just cram that hose right onto the tip of each tine just yep. to make sure the tip isn't going to gore someone, you know? Yep. Um, we went a different route. We had a bunch of cardboard. We used duct tape and cardboard and I think we did a dang good job. Like we People were impressed with our uh, wrap job. There was going to be no scratches. <laughs> and then, you know, we, we also got saran wrap from yeah. Walmart there as well. And we doubled up on our caribou rack because we each took two caribou. Mm-hmm. We put a caribou rack inside of a caribou them. rack. Yeah. We had it cardboarded, duct taped. Um, you know, the skulls were very well saran wrapped and duct taped, so no leakage or anything like that. And then we just saran wrapped. Shrink wrap. Yeah. Like basically yeah, around. the entire thing. And what happened there was after we... After we did the, uh, so the schools need to be boiled. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta do a little bit of cooking, uh, to kill whatever material might be in the the brain, brain brain matter out. Yep. Um, and so, uh, having a little boiler uh, or a turkey pot, a turkey pot and a stove, mm -hmm. you can do it. Um, now with the moose, you got to take it down to like the local well you can take it to the car wash but it's it's messy Mm -hmm. and uh that time of year it's not fun but yeah if you can just get a little boil to it and um you know (laughs) screwdriver the heck out of that brain matter and try to pressure wash it out that's we cleaned it up best we could and then we wrapped it super tight Mm -hmm. and once you have them wrapped and like you said we 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 talked to some really cool people down there that have locals were great and you would pay twice the price if basically if you have your two caribou wrapped separately mm-hmm. 
because they both take up a certain volume. But when you inset them kind of and wrap them together, they're just one object instead of two. Yep. Saved us some money. And it really, they took up almost about the same amount of space. They had the same awkward footprint. Mm -hmm. They just weighed a touch more, um, you know, as one item instead of two, but it was genius. I mean, yeah. we didn't plan on that till we spoke to somebody who was like, make sure you stack both of these things yeah, together. Yeah, why not? Yep, one less. And we're like, oh, one less duh. Box, yep. And once we wrapped it super tight like that, same with your moose. Your moose was a job. But once we got it all wrapped up and the airline website tells you what you have to do, mm -hmm. what the rules are for all of this. So we just followed the rules on the website. When we dropped it off at their cargo, they're like, you guys went the extra mile. Like a lot of people don't come close oh, dude, we to bubble wrap the crud out of those antlers. <laughs> <laughs> they're very protective. I didn't want to see any scratches or nicks or breakage on the, any of those racks. Yep. So uh, we crushed it, but yeah, the moose was definitely a job. There was a lot of, there was a lot of tines. There was a lot of cardboard, a lot of duct tape. I wish I remembered how many rolls of duct tape we got. It was a lot. We yeah, used every scrap of it. So the the um, fish boxes that we used, they needed a lot of duct tape because mm -hmm. they got heavy. Yep. Um, then they freeze. You just you just want to lots of duct tape. But um, when we got finished with it, total cost it was ironic. I didn't have antlers to ship. You know, or I mean, I didn't have moose antlers, moose antlers to ship. Yeah. I just had the caribou. So it was just one, in essence, it was one heavy caribou because mm -hmm. it was, they were combined into one. And then my, my boxes of meat, my total shipping cost was 400 bucks, I think. But yep. yours was a lot more. <laughs> I think it was like 580 or something like that, wasn't yeah, it? Close something, to six. Something like that. Yeah. Total, total fees for shipping. Yeah. So a lot of people... So think about this. It was $400 to get my caribou antlers and to get my uh, meat home through the, the shipping plus the cost of the duct tape and the cellophane, our trip to the store for supplies, which was incidental. It wasn't too, too bad. The cost of the Airbnb, but we'd need a place to stay anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the Airbnb was 90 bucks a day or something. I don't remember, 80 yeah, I can't like remember. That. Something like that. And uh, the cost of the U-Haul, like 30 bucks a day. So all in all, the the cost to butcher, to get the Airbnb, the rental car, the rental U-Haul, you know, the supplies at the store, get it all packaged and then get it to the place and then shipped on the plane. I don't know. It was 700 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Maybe a little more with all the little ancillary things that we ended up getting, but, but it did take us to butcher a full moose and four caribou. It took us two full days yep. of constant trimming, cutting. <laughs> it was a lot of butchering. And that is after, yeah, a lot of rowing. So our hands were <laughs> fatigued to say the least, not just rowing, but rowing and moving meat, moving meat. Like we moved meat. I wish we had video of every time we took a bag of meat and moved it somewhere. Cause every time you float, you gotta, you gotta put the meat onto the boats. And then every time you stop, you take the meat off the boats. And some guys that have done this were like, they never unload their boat. Mm -hmm. Once they throw the meat on there, they never unload it. We were, we were all of the mindset of taking care of our meat. One number one. Yeah. You don't get any air when you have it stacked and we had so much meat. And Number then, two, you got bears. Yeah. Like the last thing I want is a bear snooping around our boat and putting a claw and having to patch that boat. Yep. <laughs> I get I, our meat. We but, had a bear fence. So yeah, we have to take it off every single time we moved and then put it back on the boats and reload it. But we, we talked to a lot of people who have done similar hunts and they don't take the meat off. Yeah. Which I think is, uh, just a recipe for yeah. bad idea. Disaster. Yeah. Um, so yeah, by the time we got it all done, it really wasn't that expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, uh, I know I've brought stuff home in the past where I just left it at a taxidermist and it ended up costing thousands, you know, a couple mm -hmm. thousand, twenty five hundred, twenty eight hundred dollars to have them process the head and pay for, especially the international stuff when you're in Canada. 
right. bringing it across. That's way there's all these tariff fees and stuff or, or whatever they want to call them expenses where, you know, Alaska is a U.S. state, so it is a little bit cheaper, mm-hmm. but still it costs money when to, it's less hassle, but I got to say we, the chain of custody was clear for us. Like we had the meat. We we did it at the Airbnb. We dropped it off, froze it. We brought it to the airport. I know, like nobody touched my stuff mm-hmm. except me. Mm-hmm. And it was, it came back with us when we. There was no waiting six months. Yeah. And I've the 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 idea of shipping your meat home. That's a whole nother cost factor. Right. When you just drop it off at a processing butcher plant, have them do it, and then have them ship it, like. Now you're spending a lot of money. I think if you're pressed for time, it makes sense. Um, you know, and we had those um, discussions about what's better. Do we do we just drive up there? But then you start doing the math on the days that it's going to take you, that you're going to lose on the front end, the back end. Um, Biden's gas prices, everything is going to cost a fortune, mm-hmm. right? You're going to have a lot of money invested in fuel to get up there. Going from Montana, going from Utah. We did the math. Um, it we did the math. Didn't work. No. And and how we ended up doing it made way more sense. And we weren't driving. I'm pretty proud of ourselves. Two, three days <laughs> to and from. So I, mean, I think we nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and having those extra days to just process your own meat, get it all boxed up, get it all taken care of, frozen, and then off to the airport, having our antlers all packaged. You know, it was nice to have those few days right out before you just went home, too. Mm-hmm. You weren't in a rush. So it was kind of fun. We hung out in the Airbnb for two days. Yeah. Had some, uh, ordered some food. Found and a little sort of uh, coffee stand, which I was a big fan of, that made some excellent burritos. Like they made some. Their breakfast burritos dang were legit. Burritos. So we found a found a nice little burrito. Found a couple places. Pizza. We mm-hmm. had a little bit of indulgence after that many we days did. in the back country. We earned it. I'd say. <laughs> I was. I didn't feel guilty at all. <laughs> so it turned out to be a very um, effective uh, way to to manage the meat and to get it home. It doesn't intimidate me at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, f- we did the same thing in New Zealand years ago when that was one of the first hunts we ever did together. Mm-hmm. And we went to New Zealand and, uh, we each, you, we, sh- we shot a bunch of tar, chamois, um, a couple tar. I think you had three, three tar two, and a chamois. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of, a lot of hides that are right here. Yep. They're right right here, here behind us. And we got a lot of meat off of that. Yep. We did the hotel. We booked a hotel for two nights or one night. I don't remember. We boiled the skulls. Yep. We have the video. It's in the films. <laughs> and that place smelled like a, <laughs> barnyard goat uh because goat yeah. is a lot tar, different than tar is, moose. Uh, has got a stank like no other um, um it was bad we left a stain on that a little bit though we left yeah, the, the, the windows open a we little wrecked bit. it a little bit for sure but again like we figured it out um you know cleaning those skulls is probably the longest most mm-hmm. painstaking Tedious. part of the whole thing but yeah, we got all that meat back, and shoot, we chewed we, on that meat for the rest of the year. I wrapped that meat up, and um, we we butchered all of it. We packed it all out, which mm-hmm. is interesting because we've had a few people chime in and say, you know, um, you do know that you're supposed to pack the head out before you pack the meat out from the or the meat out from the kill site before the head comes out oh, and, on the moose. Uh, on yeah. the moose, which. Uh, Chris is a resident, and so there's no antler requirement for Chris. Mm -hmm. And in such places, that's not a rule. Mm -hmm. But we're also moving that stuff as fast as we could from the kill site to avoid grizzlies in the dark. And so whatever was available to throw into the boat, we were just moving as fast as we could. Yeah, I could lop the head off, and I'm going to shuttle that head out while Chris is still working on the rib cage and all the rest. So, yeah, it just made sense. So there were some people who were worried about whether we were really – concerned about the meat Mm. and if anybody has followed us for any length of time we take great pains to make sure that we keep all the meat and that our meat lasts and that we we harvest every last strip of it and we we take shots that salvage as much meat as possible meat is a 
number one like massive priority for us look and we, uh, in new zealand like we were talking about the meat there it's not a requirement to take that meat out in fact the fact is a lot of people don't. most of the people there looked at us like we had two heads like when we're we came crazy out. taking all the meat out like yeah the take, chopper like, guy was like what are you bringing all this meat out oh for? we we talked to gentlemen that had just taken a stag and they're just bringing a little bag out to take back for that evening meal but the rest stays on the mountain it's nuts and we took every scrap of tar and chamois. You know, and, and to explain that, these aren't want these aren't wasteful necessarily, but these people are these animals are invasive. Mm -hmm. And uh so there is no they, they just cull them, they just shoot them. It's a different model than we have. Here, it's different. by a mile. Yeah. It's very weird. And it doesn't but make the point sense. Is, like you I remember literally seeing signs where it said shoot a billy, shoot a nanny. Or yeah. shoot six nannies. For every billy, shoot right. five or six nannies. There's like posters in these huts yep. that would literally tell you to just make sure you shoot a bunch of nannies if you shoot a billy yeah they're they're trying to limit that that invasive species mm -hmm. um taking over and so but the meat matters to us even bears there's places you don't have say, to take bears out there's we no take every scrap of bear meat out exactly yep there's states where bears are are uh, where we're not legally required to take the meat out but you are the hide yeah. And ironically, we've been, I've gotten a little bit of an ass chewing because I pulled the, all the meat out, every scrap of it, but I didn't bring enough of the hide out mm. and yeah. they complained that they wanted to see the whole hide. I still don't. Make and I'm like, what are you talking about? That they, makes sense to me, but the officer cared way more about the hide. He's like, I can't believe you wasted the hide. And it's like, I hunt bears for the meat, mm -hmm. uh, primarily. And the hides like icing on the cake. But the regulations are the opposite, requiring yeah, the hide, bizarre. and you can waste the meat. I and that's that silly. Changes. I hope that changes someday. It but. really should. <laughs> it, I mean, it's really out of whack. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, the point was that the meat's really, really it's a priority, a priority. Uh, on every hunt. So for us, it's been part of the challenge, and some of the enjoyment of the hunt is finding how, out how to get your meat home Mm -hmm. when you go overseas or you go on some big hunt. And what we found is there, the do-it-yourself do options are incredibly affordable and doable if you just, uh, but it takes a little bit of your own time. So the hotel room in New Zealand, once we got it put, same, same situation. Once we got it all skinned out and, you know, everything cut up and bagged, mm -hmm. we found a local tavern and they let us, uh, throw freezer. our our boxes of meat in the uh in the freezer at the restaurant and bar mm -hmm. which was cool we just talked to a bunch of locals and they hooked us up and then we picked it up on the way to the airport and it was frozen and we brought it home and we had lots of meat like it's like a couple of bucks worth of mm -hmm. um you know big muley bucks worth of meat yeah i i've found places it I've been on hunts in places in the States here as well throughout the West where, um, you know, I've had to go, like I needed a freezer, like I was yeah. still hunting or whatever and or going somewhere else. And it's, it's surprising. Some of the small towns, especially very accommodating. We've like gone to just, shopping malls and stores and grocery you could stores. Even offer them like, what if I give you a hundred bucks and yeah. not nah, just use the freezer, you know? Um, I think great. the reason though, a lot of that has been greenlit is because, when we bring meat to these places, mm -hmm. it's pristine, it's clean. Like there is no blood and gore and guts. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about a finished cut and wrapped package job. Often we use a Yeti Panga. Yeah. Um, it looks clean. It's, you know, you throw all that stuff in there. It's not insulated, but it is waterproof. Mm -hmm. You throw that stuff in there, seal it. You take it to the, to the place and you're like, we just want to throw this in a freezer. What's in it? You show them. They're like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then you throw it in. Yeah. It hasn't been too much of a... Now, if you'd wanted to drag a big, dead, hair, hairy... <laughs> like, probably going to get a different answer. Yeah. 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 Uh, we have run into trouble where people are like, well, it's not really legal for me mm -hmm. to put it in there. FDA and stuff regulates us. And Yeah, there's been some grocery stores that probably shouldn't have allowed us to <laughs> throw our meat yeah. in their freezers, but they have. They've let us. Yeah, we like the the rebel stores that let us do it, not the commie <laughs> ones that small towns. Yeah. They're great. They're great. Yep. So, yeah. So that's it folks. I mean, I hope, um, your, your 
planning your own trips. And if you got more questions, leave them in the comment section of the YouTube video here, and we'll get we'll we'll respond to where we try to respond uh, mm -hmm. to the audience. Uh, and then right now, don't forget Ryan Lampers is doing a big giveaway right now, mm -hmm. huge giveaway between uh, now and Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it's probably our biggest giveaway. We've got um, three prizes, and it's all going to one dude who, or gal. Whoever wins it, it all mm -hmm. goes to the same person. Um, we're just picking one winner, and that is a Harvest Right freeze dryer, which is like a twenty-seven hundred dollar value. Jeez, I love that Harvest Right freeze dryer. I make everything with it. Everything gets freeze dried these days. Um, and then uh, we've got a uh, lifetime membership to the Insider over at Go Hunt, which is super cool. That you know, with that you get everything. You get you know the strategy articles. You get all the research tools, the maps. Everything comes with that Insider subscription. And then uh, one spot to a Western Hunting Summit of your choice in 2023, either an elk archery. Uh, event or a mule deer elk combo event, both held in June in Montana. So Every, we're gonna we're gonna announce that winner. So Sunday. it goes for a week. Yeah, December 11th through the 18th, and Christmas then Eve. We're gonna announce it on Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who purchased between now and Sunday, basically, just can, go to uh, stealthyhunter.com, and every ten dollars gets you an entry. Yeah. Yep. Easy. And then right now, uh, if you buy a gritty hat and shirt, you can win a rifle. And a Leupold scope on top. It's a Weatherby uh, 65 RPM Mark 5 Hunter. It's a sweet setup. It's retails over two grand. And uh, but all you got to do is buy a gritty hat, shirt, decal, water bottle. Every ten bucks at the uh, gritty store gets you entered to win. If you just go to BrianCall.com and click on Shop, or you just type in GrittyStore.com, you'll you'll find the site. And uh, yeah, we're gonna pick a winner uh, the 18th this Sunday, December 18th. Um, so like I said, every 10 bucks you spend at the gritty store gets you entered to win the rifle. And we also have a big peaks giveaway that goes to the 18th as well. Yep. Every 10 bucks at the peaks shop gets you entered to win a $6,000 prize package. It's huge. We've talked about it a bunch. Um, you can find out more details at the end of each of these hunt films where we talk about it in more depth, but yeah, you can be, you can win just to use the, uh, Code Gritty over at Peaks, and every ten dollars gets you entered to win, and we'll we'll announce that winner on the eighteenth this Sunday. So check it out. Some big old giveaways getting thrown out there. It's right Christmas there. time. It it's is that, Christmas it's time. It's that time, and uh, making somebody happy. Peaks is uh, out of stock on a lot of things. As of this recording, there was a few headlamps left, but <laughs> they got a shipment in, and they're almost sold out in a day and a half. Yeah, they're they're doing their best over there to get the Gators, back in. the Green Gators. Mm -hmm. Are a new hot item. Yep. Uh, not sure what the sizes left at this point are. I was happy to get my size the other day when I finally finally got my set of greenies. I can't say enough about the Peaks Gators. They are, a, they are. A, I, I just think they're the best gator on the market right now. Yeah, I don't think you could argue that they're tough as tough as I'll get out. And I the mean, comfort, the fit. They don't down. fall down. They yeah. fit. So I'm I'm I'm. I'm uh, proud to mention those, talk mm -hmm. about those. And then if you don't have a pair of trekking poles, get some. Uh, we don't hunt without them. Mm -mm. And now we're using them to help with shelter setups, tarps. We're using breaking them down animals. for breaking down animals. Finding ways to <laughs> utilize these pieces of gear, like, you know, whatever whatever makes sense. It's an effective so tool. I think you've highlighted uh, how you've been using them on your animal breakdowns, which is pretty cool. And I then appreciate that. You get the adapter, the quick sticks adapter, mm -hmm. and then you have like a shooting rest and you can adjust the height of it. Like you use the tripod where you use the poles mm -hmm. as two of the legs on the tripod. If people watch carefully in the video, yep. they would see the setup. Mm -hmm. So you have basically a single leg tripod that you packed and then you could rig it into three legs by taking your trekking poles, which you're already carrying, and yeah. fit them into the... Oh, it's a slick system, man. It's Again, pretty cool. Just shaving weight. Um, yeah, that, that tripod, that particular tripod is made by Tricer. Mm -hmm. um, T-R-I-C-E-R. -E and uh, that kid over there is making some cool stuff. So I've been playing with that tripod and you throw the sissy sticks in there and again, you just shave the weight off two legs of any tripod. Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty slick system and it adjusts like you could literally be standing up and glassing or running the spotter, you know, full stand at six feet 
and Dang. Uh, work slick. Yeah, so get yourself some trekker poles if you don't have any. And that's it. I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Thanks for tuning in and stay gritty.